All right, here we go with the second 30 minutes of the game. Let's get into it. All right, next stop. Um, yeah, I think that's where we left off. I don't remember. It's been a minute. The ancient oak. Oh, man, it picked us up from here. You climb the hill and see the remains of your campfire. Why did it start here? A terrible save feature game. This isn't right. Maybe Riora moved the campsite. Why? Also, how? I asked Riora what she did with the campsite. Well, she's not here. Okay. All right. Mm. I'll say nothing. Riora, we're back. Can you hear us? Silence. I'm pretty sure we already did this. It's fine. She's probably out for a piss. We definitely already did this. My gosh. Why do these story games have uh, terrible save spots? It's fine. Don't say it. Lassie? Where are you? By the well, trying to save little Timmy? You neither hear nor see anyone. I think we lost Riora. What? No. The we last should just be around the hill. I frantically search around the hill. There's no sign of Riora Light Spark anywhere. Just the remains of your camp and a large patch of burned grass. Yeah, we totally did this. It's fine. Damn it, people. We had one job. Just one. Protect the halfling. Relax, Alana. You see, there is no way this is our fault. Excuse me? We were supposed to look after her. We lost her. Correct me if I am wrong, but she was the one who insisted that we leave her behind. Right, Spencer? Yes. This makes her disappearance less of a mistake. It's almost as if there was a force. A power beyond her control, compelling her to say these words. Hmm. Some unknown, all-seeing, godlike figure that needed events to transpire in this particular way. I can't imagine that being the case. Therefore, we never had any agency to begin with. Well, I mean, you know. Right, Bion? You are correct, Galscap. I am sorry for being so blind. The essence and the lifeblood weave the threads of fate. We are but mere puppets in the grand design of the cosmos. I wonder if I could use my anarchy. Let's try. Trapped between the everlasting clash of order and chaos. We cannot be held accountable for the disappearance of Riyar Lightspark. We can merely place the roles assigned to us. Hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, sure, let's go with that. Wait a second, Galscap. Didn't you say you'd set up some productive wards just in case? Weren't you just listen weren't you listening? I can't read again. It's fine. Riora is gone and it's not our fault. Especially not mine. <laughs> we could merely play the roles assigned to us by the goddesses Pell. But in the wars, what what part of more puppets don't you understand? Mere puppets. I'm an idiot. Not our fault. Okay, let's go find the storm. Should we go looking for the storm then? Finally, a good idea. Yeah, no. We're not doing that. And why, pray tell not? We're going after Riora. No one cares about her, excuse me. She is our charge. We need to find her. No, we don't. Remember your speech from earlier? You know, the one about fate. Yes. Fate willed that we should lose Riora. That doesn't mean we won't find her again. I will side with Alana on this one. Oh, come on. The halflings are charged, as Alana put it. Plus, she hasn't paid us yet. And I'm a wee bit low on coins. Why do you always disagree with me? Not always. Only when you're wrong. Or being stupid. Okay, maybe always then. <laughs> Give me one good reason why I shouldn't just leave right now. Why are you here, Galscap? Why is anyone ever in Caltrion? Caltrion. The adventure? The loot? The loot. I can't even say words. It's a rich and viable campaign setting. The storms are made of magic crystals. And how is abandoning an expert in said storms a good idea? Come on, it's not that hard to find a storm. Not without a good tracker. What's there to track? You go wherever it's cloudier. Look over there. 
I point towards the mountains. In the distance. I can't read. I'll just head to that hollow mountains. I'll just head to the hollow mountains. Reading is getting better. They say the storm is more potent there. Sure, sure. If you can climb all the way up there, I'm quite good. And fight anything trying to stop you. I will cast pie and find enough supplies to last the trip. There's a... And then you'll have to figure out a way to harness the storm's lightning. Without getting hit by it. Dying. Alone. Laying there among the snow and frost. Hmm. You need us, old man. Even if you don't like it. And the halfling, too. I'm not a halfling. Suck it, losers. Especially her. Hmm. Okay, people. This debate has gone on long enough. Turbo is falling asleep over there. I kind of am. You're irritating me. No need to apologize. You sure are sleepy, Turbo. Maybe their body doesn't agree with the air down here. Since they fell from the sky and all. So... I think we should put this whole Riori thing to vote. Okay, let's... We'll go after Riora. Rio, really? A two brute? I don't know what that is. I thought you had my back. They make a compelling case. We need each other. No one needs you. That's why we found you abandoned in a field. Alright? Let's go and find that stupid storm chaser. I'll tolerate your annoying presence till then. I'm gonna punch you in your face, bruh. Don't get me wrong. I don't need you. I've been through worse alone. And you look like it, too. It would just help me reach my goal faster. You have a goal? Good enough for me. Okay. Let's find the wee lassie. What else do we see around? Other than the big patch of burned grass? Yeah. Nothing else of interest, really. Just the remains of your campfire. And a big patch of burned grass. This is useless. Maybe the burned grass is a clue. Maybe it is. Yes, the burned grass next to a campfire. Elementary, my dear Ilana. Riora can't just have disappeared. There must be footprints leading away from here. I'll bet there is. I'll take a closer look. Has anyone left his campsite by foot? How, how would anyone know that? No, for all you know, no one left his campsite by foot. Trust me, folks. No one left his campsite by foot. We heard... Look, folks. The narrative needs to move forward somehow. Obviously, this is not a dead end. There must be a way out. We just don't see it. Pavel, you are the tracker here. What do we do? This is a very hard situation, my dear Galscap. Never in all my years of experience as a sharpshooter have I ever found a scene with less clues. It's really not that bad. Use unless... Yes? Of course. Yes? It's obvious. Pavel looks at the tree. Go on. It's quite simple, really. Good God, man. Would you get to the point? We talk to the tree. Okay. All right. Look. Yikes. You what? We what? We talk to the tree. That's... You're an idiot. You're just an idiot. I have wildlife speech. Okay, all right. Which means you can tame wildlife. Oh, boy. Well, trees, all right. As in birds and stuff. Oh, but my dear BM, according to the Basement Tier Law Book, page 47, Sharpshooter Class, paragraph 10, a sharpshooter of 11 origin may use wildlife speech to communicate with trees and other flora. But you're a dwarf, raised by elves. So technically, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's play along. What do you propose? Trees see things we can't even imagine because they have eyes, I guess. <laughs> anyway, they have been here before us, duh. And they will remain here after we go. Okay, hippie. <laughs> Listen up. If we do anything with this tree, then it's burning it down. That's what I'm saying. Burn that shit down. Over my dead body. Okay, burn him down too. What are you two talking about? How are those your best solutions? It's quite simple, really. We burn the tree. Uh, listen here, you arrogant. Let me finish. 
that will create a huge inferno. Everyone will see it from miles away. That's a good point. If Riora is lost, she realizes it's us and she comes back. If she is in danger, anything terrorizing her gets scared and leaves her alone. She'll be back before we know it. Hmm. Can I kill him? <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. You said no PvP. I'm thinking about it. If you burn this tree, I will make you regret it. I promise on the sacred forest of Atal Devan. Devan. I can't talk. I will bring an army of elves to hunt down your sorry arse. It's just a tree, bro. Calm down. Just a tree, he says. Just a tree. Gentlemen, behave yourselves. You're scaring Turbo. You're actually not. This is entertaining me in so many ways. What? Sorry, I zoned out for a bit there. Enough. We'll take a vote. Again. For order's sake, Galscab. You're making this really difficult. As opposed to the tree hugger over there. I'm staying out of this one. Whatever the group decides. I just want to find Riora. What will it be? Talk to the tree or burn it? Burn that motherfucker down to the ground. Just get rid of it. Burn it all. Wow, we got a mad fighter over here. Nice. Seriously, Gal Scout. You're going to do this. I am. I can't watch this. This is too much. I go down the hill. Dude rolled out. He's a tree hugger. Okay. Well, it's my fault, I guess. Too great a temptation. Shouldn't have used the word verdant. I cast Pyroball. Raw knowledge. But it's a spell. It should work without rolling. Did you forget? Ancient yet verdant. The tree is ancient yet verdant. Thank you. This means it won't catch fire easily. Well, let's go. Fine, I'm rolling. Alright, what do we got? That was a huge fail. Okay. The fireball hits the bark of the tree. It catches on fire, but only for a little while. Rip. Come on. Are you about to leave this unfortunate incident behind? You see Pavel running towards you. Here he comes. He's back. Alana. I found a trail. What? Really? Yes. Actually, I found two. There was nothing near the fire. True. But at the base of the hill, someone came here recently. A lot of someone's. And some of them robbed Riora. What? Come, I'll show you. There's a major disturbance in the grass leading southwest. Lots of tiny creatures went through recently. Meanwhile, you see a trail of shiny metal objects heading northeast. Okay. Yeah, that was obvious. We're idiots. What are these shri shinies? They're not Pokemon, I bet. They look like Riora's gear. She did carry a lot of weird things around. Her baby, she called them. Oh, she might have actually had Pokemon. You never know. Could happen. We should follow the trail and pick them up. Obviously, she left them behind. We can find them. Hey, Lassie's right. I swear, next time you say that word, I'll bark out of spite. Oh, don't be like that. Who's a good pyromancer? Who's a good little pyromancer? Hey, <laughs> me. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> anyway, Riara's going to need her shinies. And she might give us a reward for bringing them back. I don't think that's where she is. Again, Galscap? I know, I know. Just hear me out. There were more creatures heading southeast than northeast, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Way more. Way more. I don't think that whoever stole Riora's stuff has her. How would they carry all her stuff and her at the same time? Riora must be with a larger party. I don't know, Galscap. If she could carry them on her own, someone else might have as well. Getting her stuff back might be important, too, regardless of where she is headed. We should go southeast. 
We should go northeast. Okay. This solves nothing, as always. Let me show you the map. You can decide from there. All right, let's look at it. Okay. I think we should follow the gear. We're following the gear. Let's do it. It's gear time. We must acquire shinies. All right, here we go. You decide to follow the trail of gear leading northwest of the camp. Ooh. Among the tall grass, you see flowers of every color sprouting from the ground. You hear bees buzzing and the sound of water flowing. All this makes you feel calm and relaxed. You reach a creek flowing, surrounded by tall grass and flowers. There. Your calm is gone, as you see in horror that the creek is filled with... Corpses! <laughs> I said that in such a happy way. By the lifeblood... Quite the scene, quite the serene picture you painted there, Bob Ross. <laughs> Spencer, the way you just opposed the serenity of nature with the horrid realization of death is amazing. I'm sensing a theme. Thank you, Ilana. Sure. Let's keep heaping praise on our BM for their literacy prowess. Such exciting prose. You made your point, Gauss Camp. Yeah, sorry, I, I'm. I'm not a walking thesaurus. It's not the words, but the intent that counts. Bicker or corpses? Let's go corpses. How many corpses are there? About five. Are they human? No. They're goblins. Okay, I'll go check them out. Carefully move towards the creek. The corpses have been torn apart. Their pieces thrown around like garbage. Blood is rolling down the stream, and you could see bits and pieces of equipment among the dead. Wow, hardcore. In a chipper mood today, are we, Spence? Tough week. Still, poor wee goblins. What could have done such a thing? Um, let's investigate. I want to know. We all want to know. Throw knowledge for me, please. Hold the shelf. Here we go. Let's see what we got. You look at the horrid scene. You see metal pieces, cogs, and gear. The goblins seem to have been torn to shreds by something big. Do I see Riora? No, you don't see a halfling among them. Uh-oh. Seems like you could use some help. Pyrie, Pyrie, chicken. He's a chicken. What in the name of Balagurru is that thing? Narth, I mean Pyrie, Pyrie. I probably said it wrong. At your service. Is that an undead talking chicken? Is that a brain dead talking pint? <laughs> hey. Hey yourself. The name's Pyrie. I'm just saying Pyrie once. I'm not saying it twice. How's it going? Fine. All right, then. We've got some lifeblood magic to perform. Elena, I have many, and I mean many, questions. Shoot. A, what is that? B, have you been carrying it around at all times? And C, what is that? Pyre is my familiar. All mages have one. Nanny Og Merlin? Ga okay, there's too many word words. Gandalf doesn't have one. Well, he has shadow facts. A lot of weird words. And he's not technically a mage. We here at Envy Softworks acknowledge the copyright and ownership of these characters by their corresponding creators and companies. Wow. The names are used merely for reference purposes under fair use of parody. Please, do not sue us. <laughs> Wait, what was that about? Oh, oh, nothing. Just being uh, careful. Hmm. Can we get back to the talking chicken, please? I do have a name, you know. Yeah, right. Paku Paku, was it? Pyre. Pyre. Whatever. Okay, let's greet the chicken. Nice to meet you, talking chicken. I'm Turbo. Oh, my goddesses, they're encouraging it. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't be talking to it. At least one of you has some manners. Nice to meet you, too, Turbo. My, you're an interesting specimen, aren't you? So full of potential. Right. 
How is it you can help us? Well, it's quite simple. I need one of those limbs over there. And a bit of your essence. Yeah, let's ask him about that. It's a little sus. My dear sword-swinging friend, all creatures have essence in them. Mages and the like are simply born with the ability to siphon it. She could use her own. But that's dangerous. How? It could really drain me. I need to draw my essence and my magical abilities to perform the spell. So, dear fighter, what will it be? Hmm. Let's do Ilana. Sorry, Ilana. I don't trust him. It's okay, Turbo. What reason would you have to trust me? Like you said, we only just met. I've told you, my dear child. And I'll trust as if it were diamonds. I don't like this. Well, it's her damn fault if something happens. Ilana, dear, fetch me a piece of goblin, would you? I'm in the mood for some leg today. Oh my gosh. Ew. Seriously? So many questions. Here you go, Pyre. I take out the rod of drawing and prick my finger. I feel the needle begin to draw my essence and I feel it siphoning into the rod. My body convulses and I try to resist its magical pull. Throw knowledge for me. Alright, rolling the dice. What do we got? Another fail. Screw you, game. Alright. The rod pieces pierces your skin and you feel it drawing your essence. Oh my gosh. You put up some, some resistance, but you could still feel it daring you. I will find a way. The two powers will coexist, even if I die trying. Is she alright? She sounds worse than at, that night in the tavern when she drank too much ale. I'll stick the rod into the goblin leg. I follow Pyrie's instructions. I stick the rod of drawing into the leg of the dead goblin. Repeat after me. <laughs> Hergoloth, Arbrat, Mackish. Wow. I'm not repeating that. Hey, why isn't she rolling a dice? Hedge witches have a natural talent for rituals. That sounds made up. It's a fantasy game. It's all made up. You see the leg shake as the essence passes through it, mixing with the goblin's remaining lifeblood. From it, a glowing fog arises, and it slowly takes shape. It forms into a spirit. The spirit of a goblin mixed with the features of Ilana. Disgusting. Uh, by nature's green leaves, what is wrong with it? Right, that's it. I'm a burn it. Stay where you are, you fire throwing half wit. Arr. Ilana, would you be a deer and shut its mouth? <laughs> Kelbeth. Hmm. Oh, much better. Ask away. Hello, Mr. Goblin Spirit. What do you want? Who are you? Where am I? My name is Ilana, and these are my friends. Hello there. Yeah, no. Could you tell us what happened to you? What happened? The best thing I remember is me and the gang trained to rob a halfling that was sitting alone near a tree. Next thing you know, the thing caught on fire and shot into the air. So, the wee lass got away. What do you mean, shot into the air? Was she flying? How should I know? It scared us half to death. We simply grabbed whatever she left behind and ran. Oh my gosh. And then what happened? Uh, what, here? The goblin spirit looks around and shock comes over him. Is that us? Oh, by the eternal stench. The claws. The teeth. Run, Slarp, run. It has wings. Ah. <laughs> Ilana. Kalmeth. What? Who are you? Where's Slarp? This is pointless. Was I dead? Am I dead? Then came the thing from the sky. Feathers and furs. The goblin looks up and then stares into the eyes of... Turbo! Oh gosh, you. You will go to the city in the clouds. You will search for answers. You will only find doom. I cast Pyra Ball at the goblin leg. It works. 
Gauss Cap shoots a ball of fire at the leg and it bursts into flames. The goblin spirit disappears in the smoke. Rip. Well, this has been fun and all, but I've grown bored. Call me when you've found a gemstorm. What, the Gerber was that thing yakking about? Why is our fighter associated with doom? I'd be more worried about the thing that ate them. It could still be lurking around. Suddenly you see a large flying shadow over your a large shadow flying over your heads. Oh boy. Finally. Some action. I was beginning to zone out after listening to Spencer talk to himself for thirty minutes. Um, agree. The shadow in the sky is circling above your heads. Oh my gosh, it's a flying bear. Okay. It stops and hovers above you. Then it dives down. Spends? What is that thing? Ooh. Man's roaring. Did that thing just croak or roar? I mean both. By the goddess's blessing, tis a bear raven. <laughs> he crowed again. The guru is a raven bear? Pretty sure he said bear crow. Crow bear, bear craven, bear raven. He said bear raven. Losers. Thank you. At least one of ye cretins is paying attention. Tis a most fascinating and rare creature. And he just... Alright. Thank you for the insight, Pavel Attenborough. <laughs> Pretty sure this thing wants to eat us, probably. Nonsense. It's just scared. Look at it. And roaring again. I am... What's it doing? It's slowly moving forward. It's sniffing the air and looking at the goblins. Whatever is left of them. Yeah, that's it. Time to end this. I hope I'm not too drained to fight. Wait. What now? I could tame it. Nice, tame it. Yes. I have wildlife speech. I could talk to it. Okay. If you've hit your head a few too many times, or you're way too OP, it ain't my fault that nobody reads the rules here. Have you ever looked at your class entry? Well, I... Did you know that pyromancers may use fire sources to give their spells a plus two? I... Uh, of course. Thought so. Let me talk to it. Let me burn it. And roaring. Folks, that thing is coming closer. Well, looks like we're down to a... Let's see. Befriend it. Yeah, let's befriend it. That'd be cool to have a flying bear. I stand in front of Galscap and look at him in the eye. Awkward. Not yet. I turn to Pavel. Speak to it. Will do. But if you fail, the thing is going down. Sounds fair. I can't believe this is happening. Uh-oh, I slowly move forward. I raise my hands to show the beast that I mean it no harm. Kror? I slowly reach down and pick up a piece of goblin. Isn't nature just amazing, you people? Oh, sure. Pyra and I need a goblin leg to perform a helpful ritual and we get frowned upon. But when Pavel does it, it's all fine and dandy. Shh! You're scaring the poor beastie. Here you go, little fella. Little is an understatement. I picked up some goblin meat and gave it to the bear raven. The creature sniffs that piece of meat. It looks at you, Pavel, and hesitantly takes it in its mouth. There you go. Nice and easy. Are we seriously watching Pavel woo a bear crow thing? I lean in close as I gently stroke its neck. Ew. What's wrong? Everything. And I begin whispering in its ear using wildlife speech. Throw knowledge from it, buddy. Sure thing. All right, here we go. Let's see what we get. Success. Noise. You whisper calming words into the bear raven's ear. The creature eats the piece of meat you gave it and then sniffs you up and down. Oh, gosh. It let's out a relaxed, sigh-like noise. Hmm. There you go. Be calm. See you, folks. It's friendly. Well, I'll be an orc's bumbling uncle. Well done, Powell. The bear raven has been tamed. Noise. It crores happily and follows Pavel back to the rest of your group. Folks, this is fuzzy. Fuzzy, these are the folks. Croar? Ooh, fur and feathers, achievement unlocked. Noise. Can I pet it? Sure. Croar? 
Fuzzy likes you. Turbo, tell me you're going to take part in this. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I'll pet him. It's fine. How did I end up in a hippie cult? The bear raven, but the, the damn bear raven croaks gleefully and licks Turbo's hand. Oh my gosh, he's trying to eat me. Cut it out. That tickles. Gal Scap, you have to try this. Bite my shiny pyro ass. <laughs> I love this game. It's so funny. The bear raven turns its head and plucks one of its feathers from its wings. Seriously, guys, though, that like for a story game, this has got humor in it. It's actually fun to play. I really like it. Anyway, it hands it to Pavel and Roar. Really? What did it say? Cror? Cror? Pay the boy no mind, my beauty. He's just an idiot. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. And he cries again. They gave me its feathers so I can call on it whenever we need it. Wow. Thanks. Three uses limit. Okay. FYI. Oh, damn it. It doesn't matter. We we'll use it only if there's an emergency. Am I right, girl? Crawler. Someone kill me, please. Again? I mean, if you don't mind creating a new character. I was being sarcastic. Oops. My bad. See? I have a familiar now, as well. Does that make me one of you essence-wielding, lifeblood leeching wizards? Nope. Just a tree smooching hippie. <laughs> Oh, come on, gal. I'm sure you'll find a familiar, too. Some minions would be nice. The bear raven lets out another core and flaps its wings. And crore. He's out. He takes off and flies into the sky. Bye, fuzzy. Be a good little bear raven. Well, this was absolutely pointless. Oh, come on, gal scout. We're gonna get mad XPs. And I've made a new friend. Yes. We have a powerful new ally now. What about Riora? What did we learn about her? Absolutely nothing. We did figure out that Riora wasn't attacked by the goblins. All right. She spontaneously combusted. Maybe your protection spell backfired. It did not. I never even put it up in the first place. I knew it. You had one job, you flame-spitting maniac. How should I know that she'd be attacked by goblins? How? This is Spencer we're talking about. There was no way in Guru that we'd just find her back at the camp. Are you calling me predictable? It's not that, Spence. It's just like you to go for the dramatic option and raise the stakes. You just follow basic storytelling. In other words, you're predictable. <laughs> Fine. I'm not beyond criticism. Next time I'll find a nice little plot twist to throw your way, gal scout. I can't wait. Trust me. I'll knock the staff right out of your hand. What? So, where to next? Let's have a look at the map. Oh gosh, where are we going? Oh yeah, we should totally make camp. We got a little ways to go yet, but we're having a fun journey so far. I want to make sure I hit a legit save point, though. Okay, let's see if we hit an actual save point. Night is falling. The sun is slowly setting behind the trees of the forest that sprawl before you. It has been a long day. After chasing goblins and encountering the bear raven, you feel tired. It's time you made a new camp. Noise. Shouldn't we keep looking for Riara? Who knows what could happen if we take another day to find her? She's already erupted in flames. What more could happen? What if she's hurt? Pavel is right. She might be injured. Bleeding out beneath a tree. Thinking about how she could never manage to catch a gemstorm. Her life's goal slipping away from the grasp of her fingertips. You okay there, lass? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I got a bit lost in the role. A drama teacher says that my portrayal as Godot was subtle yet intense. You do know that Godot never shows up, right? I know. That's what made the part so compelling. Mysterious 
Scherdingers? Cat of a character, whatever that is. You never know if they'll show up or not till the end of the play. That's why Mr. Mumford said I'd be perfect for the role. Method acting at its finest. This is so sad. Alana? Yes, Spence. We're happy to have you here with us. Thanks. Me too. That convention really turned out to be a success. Yes, it did. Anywho, you want to push yourselves to find Riora? But you're too tired. You feel that you need to rest. Actually, I feel fine. Me too. Yeah, me too. As I said, you feel very, very tired. You don't know how to salvage this Riora mess, do you? What? You prepared the basic nece necessary ideas for the side quest, but forgot to put in a satisfactory ending. Like always. That's ridiculous. I'm sure Spencer has the reason to progress the story this way. Sure. It's not like they will have us role-playing for like an hour. While they try to find a way to conclude the quest. Maybe they'll throw in some lame encounter like wolves or something. Even if you were right, inspiration isn't something you just conjure up. It comes at the spur of the moment. Like a sudden flash of a like a sudden flash of epiphany that makes you realize how the cosmos works. We don't need to worry about inspiration or dead ends, me hearties. Spencer, you used the pre written romp I gave you, right? Well Spence. I Spencer Basquez, did you use Tales from Caltrion? I took some inspiration from it. <sighs> you never listen. See, I'm right. As always. Wait a second. Is that even legal? I'm pretty sure it is. What do you mean? Well, there was this thing a few years back. Warlocks of the Tides, the creators of B&B, &B, lobbied against Homebrew. Oh yeah, I remember that. If it's not canon, we'll shoot you with a cannon. <laughs> Great slogan. Yeah, and even when the community stood up against them, they didn't back down. And some idiot judge ruled for them in a big case against Way Searcher. Oh yeah, that's how they got us to use every time we mentioned something they trademarked. I'm sorry, what? Why are we still playing this game? Because despite their obviously money-grubbing tendencies, they have their clutches so deep in the modern TTRPG landscape and cultural zeitgeist... It would be impossible not to support them even if we did not play B&B. Also, it's fun. When Spencer follows the script... <sighs> How about we show Spencer a little more support? The way I see it, they're fighting in the system. They're fighting the system. It's romantic, if you ask me. Even if they don't listen to their best friend. Or the law. Storytelling is a learning process. You see what works and what doesn't. And then you make it better next time. Or you simply follow the guidelines. I'm going to agree. Jailscap kind of makes a point. Turbo, no, not you too. Oh, now the noob has an opinion. Sorry, Spence. But none of the trails led us anywhere. What was the point? Maybe it'll all be revealed later. Okay, okay. Just asking. Maybe you'd like to take a turn as Basement Master? Well, uh, they're just pointing out the obvious. Pals, can we not do this right now? And it's officially night. Good job. You'll have to rest now. Guess we'll continue our search tomorrow. Don't worry, Lana. We've learned that the wee lass is alive. Probably. I trust in Spencer's affinity for plot armor. Don't give in, Spencer. Don't give in. So... You've made your camp. You light a fire and take out your bedrolls. Wolves can be heard. Oh, jeez. Guard duty? Guard duty. Who will stand guard? Easy. Hey, newbie. Yes? You're on guard duty tonight, you bastards. Why me? Because you're the newbie. And you're a fighter. I'd feel so much safer if ye were the one watching over us. Like an armored guardian angel. They did fall from the sky. Oh yeah, you're right. Spencer? Yes? Is Turbo an Althan? Uh, maybe? The plot thickens. Anyway, wake us if anything happens. We trust ye. Good night, Turbo. 
But that's where we're going to cut it until episode number three. Thank you for swinging by. I hope you enjoyed this episode of B&B.